What up, though? It's your boy, Emery Jones. You know what I mean? Checking in with the legendary Air Pollution Podcast. Representing that rock. Yeah. yeah. World famous DJ Clue. S.O. S.O. Air Pollution. Air Pollution. Air Pollution, man. You know the vibes, man. The kid S.O. World famous oh, DJ Clue, of course. Oh, my God. We finally back, Clue. Back I can't, at I can't, it. I can't, I can't believe it. You know it. who guys back at it, right? The man of the hour, Emery. Let's pop in. What's good, Salute, bro? Salute, man. It's a lot to talk about, man, but I, I just really want to talk about, for one, let's start with the project. You know what I'm saying? Like, for, uh, for a lot of y'all who don't know, uh, Emery's like one of Jay's guys, hmm. Jay-Z, and... um. He was locked up for a long time, and uh, when we were rolling and, and, and the rock was rolling, he was behind the wall. Came home, you know what I'm saying, to a great situation. Now he got his, his, his foot cemented in the soul, you know what I'm saying, and uh, he got the Puma situation. If you see the planes, that's Emery, you know what I'm saying, Puma, that's Emery, and of course, he got a project coming out, Humble Beginnings. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The mixtape. Yes, humble Let's souls. Talk, now, what made you want to hop into, you know what I'm saying, the, the music land, being that you've been doing a whole bunch of other entrepreneurial stuff, man? Um, for me, I've never liked the music business. <laughs> I've just had to deal with it. Of course. I have to deal with it. So, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I'm a team player, so I'm going to hold my brother down. So it's like i am always been in the mix, always been there, always feeding off of it. So... You know, I just been a student my whole life, you know, and I love music, you know what I mean? So it was like for me coming to this point right now to be able to, you know, do something. Like I feel like a kid in a candy store. It's like, oh, I get to put my mark on this. Like I can show up and just put a little touch, you know what I mean? So it was like, okay, I like this. I like this. Now, when you was locked up, man, mm -hmm. what was your mentality? Like you see your brother, you know what I'm saying, like, it was ups and downs, like, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, obviously it was some downs, but there's a lot of ups. You see a lot of partying, you know what I'm saying? Like for, for me, it was never a down moment. When, when you you when you in a situation how we, you know, grow up and, and live in that life, consequences come with that, you know what I'm saying? So I never looked at it as a down slide. I just looked at it as, let me handle this, put it behind me in the next chapter. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, from the day one, from when I first started selling drugs, it was like, you, you got three options. You got jail, death, and a little people, little bit of people make it. That was, that's a reality. I think the problem is now no one looks at that reality from the door. They say it, but they don't really take it in. You feel what I mean? Right. So that was the only options. There ain't no getting around it. As much as we like, yo, let's go keep it real. It's like, nah, we, we really, we really betting on the wrong things, right? Because it's no real win situation. That's a fact. It's, it's no real win situation, right? So for me, when I went in, I didn't, I didn't look at it in a negative thing. I looked at it, don't get me wrong, when they came back with the time, I'm thinking, you know, the whole process, you like one day the Fed's going to pop up. They're going to come hit you with that 10 piece. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm going to take that, get out the way. You know what I mean? But they put a little extra on that thing. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay. You, you know what I <laughs> mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, you put a little yeah, extra yeah. on it. But it was like, you know what? Let me get past this to get to the next chapter. Right. So I never took it and let it be a, 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 a down thing. Never, never down there. When I used to call home, Jay and everybody used to be like, man, you in such good spirits. Because I'm like, yo, I know seeing what's going on, I'm like, oh shit, I got opportunity. I'm right, coming right. on, I, that's all I need. I don't need nothing. It's opportunity yeah, happening. Most I'm people watching can't it. even see that. Though. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, and, and, and I understand it because I'm around people in that same situation mm -hmm. who got people winning and I'm talking about it makes them sick. Of course. Like it's, it does the total opposite. Like yeah. it takes them down. There's a bitterness. Yeah, I'm like, nah, I'm I mean, happy. I mean, I mean, and like, like, let, let me jump in here. Like, everybody doesn't have the wherewithal or the brains to understand and to accept and to excel when given the opportunity that you had. There's many other people. It takes a lot of brains. It takes a lot of structure. It takes a lot of willpower. and takes a lot of trust to do 
what you did for them and what they did for you. Absolutely. Right? What characteristics did Jay-Z have that gave you the confidence that he was going to be loyal to you, although you was in jail and had to come home? Because I, I, I looked at it like this. From day one, the main thing I did to set the tone was when I used to call home, I used to tell my brothers, y'all don't owe me nothing. I start there. What we did for each other, we did from here. Mm -hmm. So once you clear that slate coming from me, that's that balance right there. Like, I can't look at it like you owe me something and, and, and the world owe me something. That's where we go wrong once we go in the system. We put that pressure on everybody around us like somebody owe us something. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, you, you, it's already a struggle, so now you take and, and put your baby mama or your, your mom into an extra struggle because now they have to struggle even more to make sure you're good. But what separated you from everybody else? Because there's other people that's been around with, with a chance to do different things. Not only did you grab the bull by the horns, you're doing things to go to the next level. The, the planes with the marketing, nobody cared about Puma, like, like who said you came on. What separates you from the rest of them? For me, I, for me, my main thing is I totally understand who we are as a people, as a culture. And for me, when I wake up every day, I, I tell everybody when I walk into any corporate room, when I'm talking to any homie or any young and trying to, I'm like, yo, the only export we have is culture. We don't have no other natural resources in America. None. And when you understand that and you totally know who you are, I know who I am. I know who what we are. That's how I approach everything I do. That's how I approach life. You know what I'm saying? That's why we're here with the mixtape. It ain't about it ain't about selling sneakers for me. I don't do this to sell sneakers. I tell them all the time. I'm like, how can I use these platforms, bring them together, mold them together, to get the youngers a chance to drive their car where they want to drive? Ain't too many people thinking like that. I have to think like that because for me, no one done that for me. Where does that, self, that selflessness come from? My mom. mom I'm, a, I'm a mama's boy. My mama made me. Are you from Baltimore, right? I'm from outside. Let's put it like this. Okay. That's the thing. That's the I, thing I for me. I actually went to Morgan State, so and that, I graduated. So that's the thing for me. Bit. Think about it. I'm the country boy, right? Uh -huh. So I grew up on the Eastern Shore, but I got family from Baltimore and D.C., so I'm in the middle of it, right? Mm -hmm. Then my grandfather and them from Trenton, right? Mm -hmm. So I got all this going on, and I'm the country boy. But guess what? I've never let where I'm from put me in a box. Crazy you know part that when it comes to the drug dealing game, everybody know DC and Baltimore dudes. They get the money. New York niggas. Yeah, yeah, they hate it. it. That, think, that, that's why I'm trying to see the dynamic because I'm like, yo, you trusted like you coming from a different spot. You're not from Brooklyn. Right. So you telling me that you going to jail. You trusting what niggas got going on. They evidently trust in you because when you come home, they put you right in position. It wasn't no talking about it. I think it starts with who I am as a human first. Of course. I'm a good human being first. Okay. And one thing about being a good human being, I'm going to stay that. That's who I am. That's why I call the album Humble Souls. Because I walk in the room humbly first. Right? Regardless of what. I got all the credentials. I got all the credentials that everybody say put on the board and chat. But I don't let that be the guider. My humble spirit first. You know what I mean? Like, let's start there. Humbly. Gotcha. Humbly. Let me yeah, because you came yeah. over to us yesterday when we first met you and all that. You ain't have to come over and say and say nothing to us. You you came right over and you and you spoke to us and all that. You ain't you ain't need to do that. that I have that, to. That you, you in my house. That's hospitality. If I welcome you in my house, that means <laughs> I welcome you in like we welcome you in the house. It's like hospitality before anything. It's like come on, like it means more than any accolades. And I think that's what the world miss of who we are because Jay's so big and everything else and then they forget the human side. Like we, we you know I me, mean? we on some, we not kicking in the door on some how do we win. We kicking in the door like how do we win? Even when motherfuckers think we're not. We're taking all the punches and it always come from our own. But we still be like, you know what? We're going to be the adults in the room. We understand. We know where that come from. We fight. Brothers and sisters fight. That's crazy. Cousin spikes, you know what I'm saying? Like when Jay first started getting like a little bit of, a little bit of pop, and Irv brought him to my mother's house, to my basement, to come practice for his first show. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. So like, there wasn't was a you trust DJing there. for him at the time? Yeah, 
we, we, we were talking about it. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, all right, all right. Earth had brought him to, uh, to Harlem Music Club. I was dropping on some mixtapes, and I was, you know, doing my runs. Like, yo, my man want to meet you. You know what I'm saying? He want to give you a record. And that's how me and Jay first connected, because Earth introduced us. Because, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess Irv and, and Dane, they see how I was moving around. I had, like, at the time I was doing mixtapes, I had five cars. They're like, Absolutely. Yo, they, thought, they thought I was selling drugs. I'm like, nah, bro, but, yo, but wasn't Irv, uh, but, but didn't Irv tell him to sign you a Rockefeller yeah. or some shit like that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. But that's, that's the actually, thing. Yeah. You see what he said? He went to his house, to his mama house. Like, that's me. Like, people know, like, my mom, my mom is like mom and Jay. His mom is like mom. When I came to New York, I had no family. They family became, John Ty, 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 Jay family became my family. I had no family. So imagine a kid at 16 coming to Brooklyn in 88. That's crazy. With you know no what I'm family. saying? With no family, you know what I mean? But my good, my good energy and my good spirit was like, you know what? I know the ills. I so know the ills of life. You had good spirit at 16 and you had to survive, my nigga? And you still had good spirits? Absolutely. You slinging drugs? <laughs> got to survive. He's Absolutely. slinging drugs. He got to survive. And he's still telling you he was in good spirits. Absolutely. This amazing dude right here. Absolutely. How, how did you feel when you heard it was all good just a week ago? When you heard a week ago, how did you feel when you heard that song? What, what you mean? Because uh... he was talking. I mean, Jay, I don't think he... I don't know if it was a specific story. I never even asked him if it was a specific story talking about, you no, know, he was talking about you wasn't quick enough to hop over the edges with me. Hedges I, with I, me. Think, I think for me, when you listen to Jay in general, Jay has just always been an honest encyclopedia to the world. Like, there's a lot going on, and then everybody gonna be like, you know, this and that. That's why when people be like, yo, you gonna do a movie or do a book, I'm like, why? No one's gonna believe it. Like, he's definitely the type to be paying attention. You know what I'm saying? Like no, no, I know, I know, I know, I know. I feel you on that. <laughs> no one's gonna Trust believe me. it. You know what I'm saying? So nobody believes shit. Exactly. They're like, so, like, like they, they fucking believe the lies, and they tell them the truth, and they be like, that don't seem yeah. right. Like, nigga, the lie don't seem right. Exactly. exactly. So, so, so for me, it's just like I think he's always been on the side of just giving you the right information and giving you real information, and I think. In a world where there was so much going on, you always need that. You always just need that perspective to balance this shit out. But how'd you receive it when you, when, when you heard man, it? Man, listen, man, it, it's receiving it, it, it's so deeper that most people who think they understand the song still don't understand the song. Gotcha. It's a fact. That's the, that's the beauty of it. That's why he's trying to get you to explain it. I, I, it's much, it's he not ain't much I can explain, it. man. He's tell it. It's not he much I can explain, man. He's trying to get him to explain it. It's not much I can explain, man. It's cool, though, because look, at the end of the day, <laughs> I, I, I feel like it's cool because it all worked out. It all worked out. <laughs> it's not, it's not, you know, it's, 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 one of, it's one of them things, right? I think one of the beauty of my process since I've been home for me, right, is that it's easy for me to talk old war stories, but for the youngest, that don't help them. You see why this Jay-Z man, because <laughs> you know he, 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 he hold the chest tight. Yeah. You, know oh, yeah, it don't, it don't, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I mean? It's there, because for me, growing up, the OGs told me I had to go to jail and all that shit to get stripes. And I'm like, nah, nigga. Nah, how you gonna tell a kid that? How you gonna tell us that's the way that we get them fucking real strike. But they didn't know, Emery. Exactly. And I, mean, I don't because, hold it against because, because think about this. I always tell people this. Slavery didn't end that long ago. A hundred and something years ago. We all know somebody's a hundred. My father is almost a hundred. He's 20 years away right now, right? So who taught him? They didn't know shit. Yes. So we're the ones right now that should have the most knowledge out of every generation that we face. So now you can turn around and say... That ain't the way to go. I, I totally to agree because, because what you said is valid because of the fact, one thing Jay always told me that made me balance that thinking out when I used to be mad at that thought. And he was like, yo, think about it. You can't be mad at them. They, they, they was never given the tools. They was never saying? given the tools. So you, you can't hold that against them. But for me, what I can do is not do what they did at that gotcha. moment. So... For me, I can't do the old war story. Like you know better, so you do better. I, I, yeah, that's it. I got that's you. It. And me, I got to show, then talk about it. It's like leading by actions. You know what I mean? What, and that's what, what I feel like I've, I've been doing good. One thing earlier that stuck with me that Jay told me, that we was in the car talking and I had like an offer for him. I'm like, yo, my man got 100 grand for you. He's like, Clue, I'll fuck up 100 grand. 
<laughs> Who told me? And this is and this is way this is way early. This is this is in the in the in the silver four point six Range Rover days. Like he said, yo, claw fuck up hundred grand. And I was like, you know what? I was like, yo. And I and I had some paper my own at the time, but I was just like, yeah, that 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 was different thing. talk. Yeah, that, different and, type of talk. and that was a great balance for him that I've always admired. It, and we used to be like, you know, when we going through that moment and all the clubs popping up, we on tour, and the club, clubs calling, yo, we got this bag, come through. And this nigga be like, nah. No. We looking at him like, yo. Oh, you know can, who else do I that? Can, you can, know who else do that? This nigga yeah, right I'll here. Yeah, like, I'll be like, I'll be this like, nigga right I'll be here like, I'll be like, I'll be like, what's up? And then, and then we like, nah, don't do it. And then the next day we walk through for free. Yeah. <laughs> you just fact. show up. That's it's like, fact. next that's day, next day you show up for free. That's a don't fact. even. It, 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 because tell me why, I, because tell I, me. I, I think for him, and I think it was one of the strongest points that it helped me understand not to chase money, not to chase. It might seem like we, you got to balance that part out. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody thinking, you know, it's all good. It's just that fact of like, nah, I'm on my time. Like I'm on my time. And once you, once you, it's like for me selling sneakers, right? The reason why I don't, you don't put sell it, sneakers. Exactly, because, because think about it. Once you start selling sneakers, what's the thing? They're going to always base you on how many sneakers you sell. How many sneakers you sell. Nah, I'm moving culture. So, I'm moving, moving culture. I'm about to say. Well, I'm selling culture. sneakers. Like, so that means more. Like you just said, wouldn't nobody talk about Puma? That's humbly. No. Y'all niggas wearing this shit cool. Humbly. Niggas wear this shit like, you know like, 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 like they wearing ones now. Yeah, like, I'm humbly. like, yo, they niggas be wearing jumpsuits, all types of shit. I'm humbly. like, I'll see your work. Plan that. I think for me, right, it was looking at it like, first, you have to make Puma understand who they are first. You know how when you're playing catch up, you chase. You know what I'm yeah, saying? They didn't remember change. when we was wearing the suede Pumas. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so niggas change. was loving the Pumas exactly. at first with the thick laces back then. That's hip hop. Yeah, so it's like, for me, it's gotcha. like, it's like, don't chase. Don't chase, you know what I mean? Understand who you are first. And then when you understand who you are, it's easy to tap into what's going on next. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, my whole conversation was, you can ask anybody in the world, what was your first pair of Pumas? And everybody gonna be like, pair of suede. I had the gray. Exactly. I had to get them in Brooklyn. So, so let's have that conversation <laughs> and they gonna tell you the whole the scenario. They gonna yeah, tell my, you what it was. My aunt Janet you. bought them for me. She was the principal at Boys and Girls and they had them in Brooklyn and she <laughs> bought them for me. She, you couldn't get them in Queens nowhere and she bought them bad boys home in Brooklyn with the white fat laces in them. Absolutely. And I wore them to school the next day. I won't ever forget it. Absolutely. And for me. But, but, but how'd you even tap into that like Listen, what started, was your thought process I, I started trading sneakers in second grade trading sneakers in second grade I, my, my best friend tell this day is a white kid from the other side of the tracks i'm from the projects and we connected doing sneakers because we always had friends one thing about my mom was we might i might didn't get christmas might didn't get back to school but when easter came she never forced me to go to church but you know how where we from? Stay Easter, you're going to be clean. You're going to be fresh. I was getting a new sweatsuit and a new pair of kicks, Easter. That no matter what. Fact. But all y'all get money niggas from a young age be doing young shit to get money because Clue was the same way. Clue could sell shit. I ain't going to stay where he used to sell, but Clue could sell I, anything. He, say, I sell, he used to sell candy I in sell school. Candy in high school. Absolutely. He used to sell candy. He would buy the packs of candy and sell them off pieces to kids who couldn't get the candy in school. Absolutely. You couldn't get candy in school, so you had to so, so you know these niggas' minds started about hustling and getting money long before y'all recognized it. I mean, think about it. For me, trading the sneakers at that moment was, if we trade sneakers, I got extra looks. It was all on the fresh coat shit. I got extra looks that you thought I, you know, you thought I've been. You thought I, yeah. I'm coming in just. It was just for that moment. That moment. I, that moment of just having extra looks in second grade. So you've been in the culture. No, nah, this is what fashion, you. Were, this fashion is what you my, are. Period. And then the for beginning. me, fashion has been my universal language because I feel like in this world, it's three universal languages, regardless of where you're from, who you are, white, black, fashion, young, music, old. And sports. Did it bring us together? Fashion, music, and sports? Absolutely. I knew you were going to say Absolutely. That. And for me, fashion is more important because we're humans. So we deal with visuals first. 
So before I even know who you are, what you are, where you from, what you sound like, what's the first thing I'm gonna judge you off of? How you look? How you, look? How you fucking look? <laughs> so how, how you walk up? <laughs> how how your jeans lay? Because <laughs> soon as I, nigga, I, the first thing niggas see, look as soon as soon as he walked up, I said, "Hey, yo, what's some sneakers you got absolutely. on?" Absolutely. <laughs> I, I don't know what That's kind of car thing you're I driving. To him. I don't know what kind of car you're driving. I don't know what type. I don't know none of the that. The way you dress in your car. It's and fresh car. code. So for me, fresh code always breaks. The barrier. You know how it is you walk in the room with a bunch of gangsters? Even a gangster gonna look good. Gotta look fresh. Absolutely. It ain't no point in being a gangster and getting the money if you're not gonna look fresh. <laughs> even, even a gangster. So when you come in breaking the fresh code, you take the, every, everything goes down. The guards go down. Is that the bulletin down. board that you got? It's a fresh guards code? Guards go down. What about Frank Lucas? Is it huh? limit to the freshness though? What, 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 who's Frank Lewis? What, what that mean? You fresh, you got extra eyeballs. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, think about it. Like, you, 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 you could take a Frank Lucas or whoever when you when where we from? There's been a million of them when you talk about niggas who fresh. fresh I know money. motherfuckers fresh ain't got a dollar. A dollar. I ain't got a hot dollar. They the freshest comes, niggas. They the freshest one. The freshest niggas ain't got ain't got no money. Freshest. What are you talking about? For me, because of me, I, I, my mentality has been I'm walking out the house every day like a hit record. Absolutely. I'm showing up like a hit record every single day. Mm -hmm. Even on my worst day, because you know why? That shit gonna keep me in the mood for when I shake it off and get one. You know how it is when you get one. <laughs> you know how you know how it is. We, was, we was listening to uh what's what's what, what's DJ Cool? What was it, the one let me clear my uh -huh. We was listening to that, me and Big D was listening to that coming up. He's still getting booked from that one joint. Hell yeah. One one Hell hit record. Yeah. One record. That's you understand right. what I'm saying? I be telling people that one hit record, one hit change, record your life. change your life. So, so for me, I'm wake, I'm walking in like a hit. Record. I'm walking out the house like that. Let me ask y'all like a every quick day. question: How y'all get together? It seems like y'all got some business going on. What's happening? Clue back in Rock Nation. What y'all got going on? Let me speak on that. One. Okay, go ahead. Because it's an honor. Inquiring minds want to know. You heard it's me? A, it's an honor for me, right? In the process of doing this and getting to this point, and you know, we did the tape and we buy it and still raw. So we get everybody in the studios and board, and he's like, yo, told the youngest, put your best mixtapes up there. So, you know, they young, so, you know, they had a different era than me. But me, I'm never one to look down on them. I, I see it, I, I gotta understand. So they got all this stuff up there that's really, to me, it's albums, not mixtape. But the one that stick out on there, they got DJ hey, Clue, cool. right? DJ Clue, so we going through this process of, you know, we need somebody to host this, 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 this project, right? So me, I'm, I'm just one of the ones, I don't never want to overstep. I don't never want to, you know, I'm never, so I was like, it's hard for me to say, but Cheyenne, Cheyenne kept, Cheyenne was, she stood front, she like, Clue, from day one. Cheyenne's like, no, Clue, we need Clue. And I'm like, you know, it, it's, I, I don't want to add, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I don't want, you know, because, you know, that's a, it's a hard ass, right? Yeah. But the team, she was so on it. I was like, you know what? Let's, let's, let's go for Clue, right? Let's go. So we called, had the conversation, like, and I gave it to him raw of why this project, what this project is. He didn't hear the music, nothing. And Clue was like, I'm in. Clue was like, I'm Because the way I broke it and told him why this is going on, this is bigger than me, this is bigger than me, he was like, I'm in. And when he said he was in, I was like, you know what? I got on a plane. I came to New York, I said, nah, I gotta come and play this nigga. Uh, okay. I, gotta, I, I say, I gotta let him know we ain't coming. That's it's something old, he can wrap his arms around. That's the old way of doing business. I was like, he can wrap his arms around it. You know what I'm saying? Like, right now, it's that time where there's no clue can come and wrap his arms around it and make it, make it that thing. You feel what I'm saying? And I play and play the music, and everybody say, you know, clue the one don't give off no expressions, no nothing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, he like, it's, it's cool. Yeah, but, but he was, he, he, you know, he said a few words. And I walked out and I was like, you know what, for me, it's like I'm able to sit here now and be like, nah, I missed a lot of shit. My first project with Clue, us back to get Monumental. Like, it's monumental. It's like I don't look at him as Clue. I look at him as family. Because from a distance, when I was gone and everything going on, it was family. People forget that. So, you know what I mean? It's that. that. People, people forget family. that. You know what I'm saying? So it's family to me. I'm not looking at it. Like, so why would I even think about no way? And then him embracing it and us wrapping our arms around it. And then we going in the studio with Duro and mixing this thing down. You know, That's I'm walking, crazy. I'm walking That's out nostalgia. like a kid. 
You know, I'm That's walking, I'm the, I'm, I'm right walking in the house showing niggas pictures. Niggas like, oh, y'all got dog outside? I'm, 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 glad, you know I'm glad that y'all doing that because I feel like people, because of how history goes and Clue is more on radio now, people forget so many things. And I feel like, like this type of thing is like a perfect fitting for himself and for Rock Nation and the symmetry with the whole Rockefeller thing, I just think it's a, I think it's a beautiful thing. I mean, people, me, I, th I feel like, you know, me and Jake got history, like, people can never take that away from us. Never. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was taking him around to clubs. When he didn't want to go, I'm dragging him to the club. We got to go play a new record. We going to three clubs, four clubs in the night, playing his record. You know what I'm saying? He like, he tapped me like, yo, you got money on you? I'm like, yeah. I give him some money, he throw the money in the crowd. I'm like, nigga, this nigga took my, this nigga took my thousand dollars and throw in the crowd. This nigga's bugging. My thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, you know you leaving the house, you gonna do this. Take yeah. my money, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So, he probably threw his you know out. Yeah, so, so. <laughs> yeah, he like, yo, but it's cool, cause we, yeah. we, we, we making money together. So it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what is that compared to, you know what I'm saying? The, that what we put in the nothing, cement yo. that niggas can never take away from us. You know what I'm saying? Like we did, we did shit that niggas never thought we would ever could ever do. Like you know what I'm saying? I like, did shit that people only dream of, bro. Yeah. And then for me, it's like I really take on that. It's like, oh, I get to come and we get to add another page to this book. Like that's to me. See, but most people don't want to add pages. Niggas just like let me get my little money nah, from there and all like that. Nah. That's what I feel like is the difference of whatever y'all got going on in that building. People could be complacent, but they're not. It wasn't. It was never even about. Uh, it's ne let me rephrase it. It's never about the money with me. Like you know what I'm saying. Like you, there's some stuff that you just can't put a number on. Like you know what I'm yes. saying. Like, like me and Jay would talk, and he would talk about Emery sometimes, a little bit here and there. But you know what I'm saying. Like when I met him, genuine vibe. You know what I'm saying. So if you'd asked me to do it for free, I'd have did it for free for him. Feel me like. It ain't, it ain't never about the money. It's, it's, all about, it's all about relationships. Relationships are bigger than any check Hell, someone can ever write. I'm just doing so, like, you know And, I, and like, I just think it's perfect timing. I think, I think the world needs that. Like you just say, what you feeling? I think the world needs to feel that more. That's what I'm we, we, we need that more back in it because, like you said, look where we at. You know what I mean? All due respect. But it's programmed. Yeah. Remember that word. Everything is programmed. So when it's programmed, it's a nice, beautiful, big box to be programmed in, but it's still a big program box. And that's not what culture has been. We, we, we've always been... We, we've so always, you about to be a, a fucking music mogul now, too? Nah. That's where you're going. Nah, you're going from clothing nah, to nah, sneakers nah, to music nah, now. Real Drop question I want to I wanted to ask them. <laughs> when, when coming up with the idea for the mixtape, what made you want to do it with all new artists rather than do it with... Because you could go and get Jay-Z, Uzi, Beyonce. You can go get whoever you want to get, right. pretty I think, much. I think when I look at them, I look at myself, right? And I'm like, when they first was brought in the building... I'm first on good humans. I'm going back to that. And when they bring you in the, in the building with me and you good human, I'm like, my door open to you. I'm whatever I can do. So I'm not waiting for you to blow and get some accolades. I'm fucking with you from the door. That's so different. a lot of, we built the relationships there and they like, wait a minute, I'm there for them before it even looks right. right. So when you build that relationship and the opportunity, I'm like, you know, I'm fucking with these youngins, man. I'm like, you know, they, why not? Humble why, beginnings. Why not? Why Why not, right? Why not? That's why it felt good to just hit play yesterday. And then everybody, because, you know, we live in an opinionated world and it's rap. So when you talk about rap, that's the first thing we're going to do is be opinionated. That's just the skill of the game. It's a contact, opinionated sport. sport. It's a contact sport. You know what I'm saying? It's so a contact sport. when you hit play and motherfuckers are spitting, you like, oh, okay. And wait a minute, Kluma, man, Rick, that shit, come on and say, Kluma, not, you stop there. Yo, bro. We stop bro, there. He didn't even tell me he hosted the shit. <laughs> we come up, and I'm looking for him, thinking he gonna be sent down. He's like, nah, your man is over there. So I'm looking, so I'm about to walk around. He's like, DJ Clue, so I turned around. I, I looked at the speaker, like, what the fuck is yes. going on? I didn't even know he was yes. hosting the mixtape. I, 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 I just think it's, it's, it's yes. the same thing where I feel like, People just need to hear it. Like, you yes. know what I'm saying? It's, it's like when you press play and hear it, like, you don't even know what to expect. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's like the element of surprise, and I feel like it's quality music, like, you know what I mean? Top to bottom. So, totally, like, totally agree. You know what I'm saying? I'm, like, happy, for, I'm, I'm happy for you 
because you do this shit well, and I feel like that the opportunity should have been given to you on a grandioso scale prior to this. Mm -hmm. And I fucking fuck with you for even championing it to have my man flying from the West Coast to just come knowing he's important enough to bring him music because that's gonna create something. That's the old way. You know, you know what my win out of this? serious about winning. You know what my win out of this? Out of everything, then the records, then being a music mogul, is being able to walk and, 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 and run with this me and Clue and have conversations like this. Because I feel like the world needs to hear Clue talk more. You know what I'm saying? Agree. Like, we ain't got to say much, because that's what I'm telling them. I'm like, less is more, mm -hmm. because everybody's going to talk for us. But we at least got to go spark it. And if we go spark it, the world going to get the beauty and, and the genius of him even more to understand why even more. Because if not, we're going to keep missing these. It's going to be broken up, and everybody's going to speak for you, right? And I'm like, in this day and age now, I want to hear it from the source, right? Yeah. I want to hear it from the yes. source. I don't I don't got to get deep yes. in it. I don't need to I don't need to be all of it. I just I just need a little bit. And Tell I, and, me. And, and that's what I'm that's what yes. I'm that's matter of fact, that's what my job is right now. To get it from the source? We're gonna spark it up. We're gonna go and we're gonna go and have fun with this shit. Uh -huh. We're gonna do some shit. We're gonna we gonna, you know, we businessmen too. We can make some make money. Some money. Ain't, okay. no, ain't nothing talk about we like money too. We like nice things, you know what I'm saying? So we're gonna make some money. But on top of that, we're going to be able to go to Harvard and say, let's have a conversation really about, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's, that's that. And then when we go to Harvard, we're going to take the Harvard energy back to the hood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Change we ain't going to never forget the hood. We're going we to go, we go and, and set it up and do that type of stuff, but then bring it back to the hood in a way was though they can see it and feel it different. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, we did it that way so you can really realize that you can be in Harvard behind the thing, it lands doing the boom, 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 boom. So you basically here. just got a hunger to change lives right now. Absolutely. That's what you're doing. You're in Absolutely. a comfortable place. Absolutely. You got some power where you got a hunger to change lives and you're putting your best foot forward. Absolutely. Humbly. Humbly. Absolutely. At that, that right there, humbly. Absolutely. All right, let them know when the project's coming out and all that stuff, man. Man, shoe drop on the 14th, single now. We ain't seen that. We didn't even talk about 14th the shoe. 14th of what? 14th of what? Of July. Right, shoe, shoe drop on Friday. You know what I mean? Like, shoe is, shoe is you know what I mean? Evolution of music is like the, the cassette to the CD player to the MP3 player. You know what I mean? Like, you, you don't get no more better than that. The, uh, the single dropping now. You know I me, mean? we going live, shooting a video, we we mixing up, got this challenge. Before the album, we got this challenge coming. Yeah, we got you know the rap mean? challenge, man. Your chance to win ten thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna let the instrumental out there for takeover, which is the first single. And you could win ten thousand dollars. We're gonna give you some gear from planes, some gear from Puma. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I'm about to throw me a some other stuff. stuff, man. We got some other stuff. We're gonna announce that on Friday, so make sure y'all tap in. All right? And it ain't no check. We went and dug it out the backyard. That's it. That's it. Mm. We can cash get you money. Cash, cash money still money. good. Cash money still good. Cash money. I don't give. And where I'm from, cash money is. And yo, where I'm from, cash money still cash good. Cash money is golden. About? You know what I'm saying? Open the paper bag, baby. Cash money is <laughs> golden, man. I don't know what they talk about. Big coin and all. Burn. I get it. I know that's the future, but where we from? Cash is cash still king. Is, cash is air it. pollution. Like subscribe. Super thanks, all that good stuff. We back, season two, we lit. Bow. Air pollution, air pollution.